Hi, my name is Dr. Mozam Islam Tewana and today I am going to talk to you about how the mobile communication systems evolved from the 1G to the 5G uh, and what are the key differences uh, that, are there, that are there between these technologies. Now first of all, uh, when we talk about 1G, what does this G stand for? G actually stands for the generation. 1G means the first generation of the mobile communication systems and this first generation of mobile communication systems was actually deployed in the early 1980s and there were three most popular systems there were many systems in the 1G but the three most popular systems were AMPS advanced mobile phone system which was primarily developed in the United States of America and then there was NMTS the second system, the NMTS, was the Nordic mobile telephony system, which was actually developed in the Scandinavian countries and primarily deployed there. And then you had the TAX system, Total Access Communication Systems, which was actually developed in the UK and deployed in the Europe. So these 1G mobile communication systems were actually analog systems, means, uh, means they used uh, FDMA along with the frequency modulation uh, and they had some drawbacks. The drawbacks were that they suffered from the poor voice call quality, uh, they were large in size so the battery drained out very quickly, uh, there was no mechanism for the security of the communication of the users, anyone with an FM receiver could actually uh, intercept the communication of someone who is talking on a mobile phone and the network operators uh, which operated these 1G systems uh, actually had limited number of subscribers and there furthermore there was no roaming for example if there is an operator which is using AMP system in a country and there was another operator in that country which was also using the AMP system in that country so when a user from one operator wanted to go in an area where there is only coverage of the operator number two although they are using the same AMP system the roaming was not possible so uh, in order to overcome these uh, drawbacks actually then uh, we went to the 2G or the second generation mobile systems and when I talked about the second generation mobile systems they were launched in the early 90s and there were three most popular 2G systems, although there were other 2G systems as well, but the most popular uh, 2G system was the GSM system, Global System for Mobile Communication. Uh, GSM was primarily developed in the Europe and was a European standard. And it was the most popular uh, mobile system uh, that was widely deployed in the world. And then you had the digital amps. Actually amps, as we know from the 1G, it was primarily developed in the United States of America. So it's, it's digitized version, which uses the digital techniques, was D amps. And then you had a third system, which was IS-95 or the CDMA-1. And the IS-95 or the CDMA-1 was a 2G system which was based on the CDMA technology and was developed by the Qualcomm, okay. So, uh, these 2G systems were actually digital systems, there was the possibility of roaming was there, like there is an operator in Canada for example which uses a GSM uh, system and a subscriber goes to United, uh, uh, a subscriber of this operator goes to the United States of America and there is a uh, two G, uh, GSM system of another operator in the United States of America then if some uh, then it was possible if the two operators in the United States and the Canada had an agreement between them then it was possible that using the same mobile phone that the subscriber used in the in Canada he was able to uh, use that same sim in the United States of America uh, of course at a different tariff now you had also the ability to send the SMS, uh, the security increased because now the voice was encrypted. And also uh, for the first time in the 2G systems you had the possibility to use the 
data networks are you have you had the possibility you to use the internet and the data rate that you uh, that these systems were or uh, that were offering at that time was quite limited it was from 9.6 kbps to 14.4 kbps these 2g systems were operating this much data rate and it was not much of course so uh, these are some of the devices that you can see that the, these are 1g devices they were bigger mobile phones which slowly uh, shrank in size but improved in quality and then you have the 2g devices which so slowly shrank in size and improved in quality now uh, we talked about the low data rate in the 2G system. Now with the passage of time, uh, the subscriber wanted more internet traffic on their mobile phones. Like they wanted to send large emails, uh, they wanted to browse the heavy sites, they wanted to stream the videos. So how, how could it be possible? One possibility was to go from 2G to 3G at that, but going from 2G to 3G it's a huge investment because first of all the operator has to buy new spectrum number one secondly he, is to, he has to install the new technology and all this takes time so uh, and investment in terms of money as well so that's why that uh, the operators they came up with an intermediate solution that they came up with the 2.5 and 2.75G systems that were between the 2G and the 3G systems and and the purpose of these system was to increase the data rate that uh, the users were getting on their mobile phones like two, one of the 2.5G system is the general pack, GPRS or the general packet radio service and it could actually give you a maximum theoretical data rate of 171 kbps on your mobile phone but uh, keep in mind that this was the theoretical data rate actual data rate a user is getting depended on many factor like how many subscribers are there in that area uh, furthermore what are the propagation conditions in that area it so uh, actually the user the data rate that the user got instead of 171 kbps it was around 50 kbps and so gprs was a 2.5g system and it was the evolution of the gsm standard and then you had the edge edge stands for enhanced data gsm environment and in the edge you had a maximum data rate of uh, the maximum theoretical data rate of 473.6 kbps and but again it was a theoretical data rate actual data rate that you got was around 100 kbps and then uh, is95 has also had also its intermediary 2.5g as you can say system that was 1x rtt cdma 2000 1x rtt that evolved from is95 and it has a had a maximum theoretical data rate of 384 kbps now the these are the uh, now this is the roadmap of the cellular technologies that how these cellular technologies evolved here as we can see that gsm system which was a 2g system evolved into a 2.5g gprs which then evolved into 2.75 edge uh, many operators did not actually uh, deploy 2.75g edge and went to the wcdma it was possible WCDMA was a 3G system that was basically the evolution of the 2G GSM system. WCDMA or the wideband CDMA is also known as the Universal Mobile Telephony System or UMTS. WCDMA and the UMTS are the one in the same system. And there was also a Chinese version of 3G system which was known as Time Deviant Synchronous CDMA system okay so this was the one path of the development starting from the evolution of the gsm and the second path of the development of the 2g was from the is95 which was already a cdma system but it then evolved into the 2.5g 1x rtt uh, 1x uh, radio transmission technology and which subsequently evolved into the 3g cdma 2000 system which was the e-video and 3x rtt system and we can see that all these systems are actually merging into the 4g systems 
to so the uh, purpose was to have a unified standard for all over the world for the 4G systems uh, so that the uh, equipment costs and the interoperability issues could be handled more easily. Now we come to the 3G systems. 3G stands for the third generation mobile communication systems and as we uh, as we talked about there were two main uh, types of 3G uh, rather three main types of 3G systems was one was the WCDMA or the UMTS second one was the time domain synchronous CDMA or TD SC, uh, SCDMA which was actually de deployed in the China and the third, third one was the evolution of IS-95 which evolved into the CDMA 2000 system and uh, these 3G technologies were actually divide, uh, deployed in the mid-2000 like 2003, 2004 these technologies were uh, starting from the 2001 the 3G system were being deployed in the world okay uh, and the 90 percent of the 3G system uh, systems that were actually deployed were the WCDMA or UMTS systems so we will talk uh, more about it but the theoretical data rate that these systems were offering uh, to a single subscriber was only 384 kbps so it was not again it was not much so they again came up with the intermediary solution that they came up with the 3.5G systems that were between the 3G and the 4G systems to enable enhanced data rates on the existing 3G systems and nowadays when you say that it's the WCDMA that one, uh, uh, an operator has deployed WCDMA and it then it's actually 3.5G because it includes uh, it may include uh, HSDPA, high speed downlink packet access technology as an add on. It may include high speed uplink packet access as its add on, uh, and it may include high speed packet access plus as an add on. So these 3.5G systems, HSDPA, RHSUPA, RHSPA plus, are basically intended to increase the data rate of 3G systems and this data rate can be anywhere uh, can be increased from 1.8 Mbps to actually 20 Mbps so uh, on your existing 3G system using these 3.5G systems as an add-on now the what are, what are the advantages of 3G systems 3G systems had many advantages like you could send and receive large emails you could use high speed web you had more security you could actually do the video conferencing you could do uh, you could play 3d games on the 3g system you could see mobile tv although it was not very successful and you could stream uh, live videos on your mobile phone and so we can we can call them as the truly broadband system because they provided us with the high data rates but there were some drawbacks to the deployment of 3g systems as well the spectrum of 3g system was very expensive so in, in like in uk there were some operators that bought the 3g spectrum but it was so much expensive that they didn't have the money to install uh, the those uh, networks and furthermore uh, as these are advanced technologies that were actually used in the 3G systems so the impl hardware implementation of these technologies was uh, more complicated so the devices the network uh, that were used in the network as well as the user devices the subscriber a device a mobile phone that a subscriber used its, co its costs its cost increase and you uh, furthermore these were initially these were large cell phones which were then uh, with the passage of time and with the advancement in technology which actually became smaller in size now after the 3g system then came the 4g systems are the fourth generation mobile communication system and they have started being deployed in the uh, in the 
early 2011 and the late 2009-2010. And uh, basically, there were two uh, main, uh, there were two systems. When we talk about the term 4G, it includes two systems. One was the LT, or the long-term evolution of the 3G systems. That was a 4G system. And then you had the YMAX that was actually developed by the IEEE. But LT was more successful in this race because the big, uh, big uh, companies are the big uh, vendors that actually made and uh, the operators that operated the mobile communication systems, they actually supported the development of LT instead of YMAX. So YMAX is used to provide the broadband services, mobile broadband services, uh, a higher data rate, but they are not used uh, for the as a regular mobile service uh, in addition to the provision of data rate. So LTE is basically used for the voice services as well as for the high data rate services. And LTE provided a data rate of 50 megabits per second uh, to a user in the downlink and 100 megabits per second to, to a user in the uplink and uh, and when we uh, and when we talk about the 4.5 g system or the lte advanced system it actually provided a data rate of uh, it actually provide it can uh, it targets a data rate of 1 gigabits per second uh, having said that all these figures are basically the maximum theoretical data rate they depend upon lot of conditions like how many users are there in a cell what are the channel condition, how much bandwidth is coming from the uh, back of the network. And the 4G systems were actually all IP systems. This means that all IP system means that uh, voice is carried over the packet network. This means that on the backbone you have a packet network and all the voice and data services are basically carried on the packet or the IP network. Now, what are the advantages of 4G system? Uh, 4G systems provide a higher data rate and it provides a higher security and it provides a higher quality of service. What do I mean by quality of service? When I talk about the quality of service, uh, basically uh, take an example that someone is using uh, YouTube, uh, is someone is using a YouTube over his mobile phones. So, and it's not streaming properly. So, so what can be the reason that it's not streaming properly? Uh, the most uh, common reason is that actually the packets that are coming for to uh, from the network to the mobile phone to play that video uh, are not arriving in time. They are not arriving in the delay uh, delay in which they should arrive so that delay constraint is being violated so the tap packets should not only arrive in order which are being used to play that video but they should also arrive from the network uh, in in a delay time in a delay time constraint so so in the 4g system there was a lot of emphasis that whether a, a user is using a video services, a video service, or he is using a, uh, he is using, a, he is doing, do, uh, doing video conferencing, he must have the quality of service to have a good user experience. That all the delay constraints and the data rate constraints must be met. There has been lot of emphasis in the 4G systems on the quality of service aspect. So the uh, advantages of this system are that it provides more security. It has the uh, it has more it provides more data rate as compared to the previous system. Uh, the when the operators were op which are operating 4G systems, they are basically pro they uh, they have they can uh, accommodate more subscribers because these systems have more capacity. And as the data rates are higher, so the cost per bit are the cost of the da that data actually decreases. Now, uh, so again, with every system, there is an uh, there are disadvantages or drawbacks of the 4G systems. 
like the battery drains out very quickly and these advanced uh, receivers actually are more complicated to implement in the hardware so that's why the price of the mobile phones actually goes up and similarly we need uh, the equipment for the 4G it is more expensive as the hardware implementation of all these advanced technologies is more complicated and then we come to the 5G mobile communication systems. 5G me refers to the fifth generation of mobile communication systems. Uh, some vendors uh, actually claim that they have developed the 5G mobile systems, but in reality there is no consensus at as what the 5G is going to be. Like uh, there is no consensus between the operators. Uh, the big operators of the world that what this 5G is going to be like what frequency 5G frequency band 5G is going to use what will be the network architecture and ultimately what are the technologies that are going to be used so the development of 5G is an active area of research and it is expected that these system will be deployed in the early 2020 so uh, I hope that you would have find this video useful and it would have helped in demystifying the differences between the 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G. Thank you.